Hello and welcome to Unprofessional Engineering. My name is James. You got Luke. Luke, we're continuing our series of what is fill-in-the-blank engineering, this time going with computer engineering. This is not what I thought it was. No? Because, so that's the general term? Yes. And then what I realized in my extensive research is that uh, there's actually quite a few subfields underneath computer engineering. I tended to focus on computer hardware engineering. Okay. I'm not sure what you focused on or if you even did that because you're not really as good as me at doing research. True. But uh, that's the one I focused on in particular. I like it. So I have a little bit of information about various ones. But one of the things that I've always confused is what's the difference between computer engineering and computer science? Because they always kind of felt the same to me, but... Obviously, I was wrong. So off the top of my head, Luke, top of your head. Here's, here's a little bit of a difference. A computer engineer will build hardware while computer scientists usually do not, right? So a computer hardware engineer. However, computer scientists know enough about hardware to kind of analyze a computer system and like its operations and interact with hardware engineers. Computer scientists know more about like the underlying theory of computation, programming languages, and operating systems. So computer engineers often work as programmers. Most system level programs, such as like programming languages and operating systems, are designed by computer scientists ah. as opposed. So so back in the day the day the day the good old days when I was at the glorious Pennsylvania State University go Mudcat Mudcat Lions um I started out as a computer engineer. No you did not. I did. So semester 1 I think I was a computer engineer and that's when I took my first programming class. And you were like Nope. Yes, that is exactly what I was like. I was like, well, I'm not going to do this for the rest of my life. <laughs> so that quickly ruled out computer engineering and computer science as an option for me. Yes. I finished that class and I pieced out. I think I got an A. Like, I was capable of doing it. Oh. It was just not fun to me. Yeah, so my, my brother-in-law is a computer science guy. Okay. And he started out as a programmer and doing all kinds of – and that's all he did all day long was, like, programming – and uh, for him, it actually worked out because he actually started a consulting business where he actually has contractors all over the city of Pittsburgh, Ooh. and they all work for him. So he's making a ton of cheddar. So he doesn't even do work he doesn't, anymore. Oh, no, he just he, hangs out. He goes golfing and oh, takes that's people to awesome. dinner. So he's making a ton of cheddar right now. But the idea is, I, it, it's kind of like you and I. You and I have engineering backgrounds mm -hmm. in I couldn't engineer a box right now, probably, since I've been doing this whole marketing really gig. Really, feel for like that hurts years. our credibility here. It Luke. does a little bit, but you know, I want to be. I could. Okay. But I'm just saying. So don't think if if you're in school right now, don't be offended that we're saying, oh, we're not good at this, or don't do this, or whatever recommendation we make. Keep in mind, your career is going to change probably multiple times, especially in engineering. You might become an engineering manager. You might get out of engineering, go into sales. They tend to do really well, sales engineers. They do. So just keep that in mind. The only thing you should really take our advice on is don't become civil engineers, right? Yeah, they're the worst. Oh, the worst. No, not really. Okay, so the next thing I had to talk about, and I figure we're kind of going from like baby to grown up baby here. Baby to grown up. Uh, is the best colleges for you to attend. Of course. So if you're looking to go to school for computer engineering, in the United States of America, here are your top tens per U.S. news. This makes me so mad, too. So, number one, MIT. Real shocker. You know how much MIT costs I know year? how much I say it We've costs. We've done this a bunch of times. Yeah. I have. It's, it's like, worth repeating. It is. It's 53000 and some change per year. Yeah. Yeah. Bananas. I rounded it up to 54 because I'm not good at math like <sighs> the MIT crazy. grads. So yeah. you go for four years, you got essentially $200,000 worth of debt. Yeah, basically. Yikes. Yeah. I mean, maybe they go, a lot of them get a scholarship. I don't I, know, because they're all so smart. They better have a scholarship. Yeah. I was thinking about this. And so uh, I think depending on the list you go after, these kind of shuffle around a little, but it's the same name. Essentially. So number two for mine is Carnegie Mellon University here in Pittsburgh. 49 k a year. I saw it higher than that. Oh, now. you did? Yeah. Okay. But I was thinking about CMU. Someone asked me about like going there or could you go there or whatever. And I was like, if you picked the easiest major and found the worst student in that major at CMU, I guarantee they're smarter than I am. Oh, without a so, doubt. So, you know, good job for you, CMU people. Berkeley came in at number three for me. 
43k versus 14 uh, out of state versus 14k in state and i think on one of our other episodes we mentioned one of our write-ins explained to us the difference between berkeley and how it ha- it's a in like a state school yeah. and then stanford who's number 5 on my list which is just a private school and that's why like mit it's around 40 or 54k yeah. that's as why well. there's no in state out of state it doesn't right. make a difference it's expensive as all get out right georgia tech comes in at like a deal here 33k out of state and 12.6 in state that's good and then rounding out we get a lot of nice big 10 schools in there university of illinois uh university of michigan university of texas not big 10 i get it but they're still up there cornell up new york another private school 57k and then purdue this is the the deal of all deals you get number 10 on the list 29k out of state only 10k in state so kids in Purdue land, go there. So each and every one of these universities were on my list uh-huh. of places that, that I wouldn't would, let you in. Would <laughs> never let me in. Just just putting it out there. Penn State came in at number thirty five on the list. I didn't even Not see it. So on, bad. I didn't even see it on my list. I kept scrolling down <laughs> and scro- like lo- I had to press the load more button at least four <laughs> times. Not that that's bad. Thirty five is pretty good. So around good. the world, though, we oh, have some other options. I, I mean, we keep getting write-ins. We're an international podcast. So we I feel are. like we have to do this. Number one, and again, just like in our other episodes, some of the U.S. schools still fall in this top ten of like best in the world, but I kind of weeded those out so that we could get more in here. University of Cambridge in the U.K., Oxford in the U.K., this one's always on here, the EPFL and ETH Zurich, the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology Technology in Switzerland, National University of Singapore. That was on another list before, too, as yeah, well. Yeah, okay. a lot of good tech schools. University of Toronto has been on the list before. Nanyang Tech in Singapore. Imperial College of London, also been on the list. Uh, Sing Hao Yu in China. Peking University, where you have to minor in Peking Duck as well as engineering, <laughs> I assume. No? And then last, my favorite here, the University of Edinburgh. I was just, it was so funny you pronounced it that way because I was waiting to pronounce it Edinburgh. And then be like, you said Edinburgh, you Pittsburgh, yeah. Ginzer. Yeah. So oh, would you yeah. ever consider going to a university outside? I don't know if I asked you this before. But would you ever do that? That's so funny because my next line was, if you were going to go to a college outside of the U.S., what would it be? Yeah, I, I, um, would, would you do that if you had the opportunity? Uh, or, I mean, not now. but Well, yeah, because you're old. Right. Looking back, I kind of wish I would have traveled after school if yeah. I had money. I didn't have any money. Maybe so like go do a master's yeah. or something like that. But I would have done school abroad. I would have liked to have gone to Italy or something. But I think going to Scotland or England would be a good place for me to land it's not that different but it's different enough you know a co-worker whose daughter is goes to school in ireland for her university we do yeah we do i'll tell you after the show but it's kind of cool because like he he's visited her a few times and he's put some stuff on facebook and twitter and stuff like that and i just think that that's so cool to give to let your kids have that experience of not only going to university and, you know, kind of, you know, spreading their wings, but they're doing this in a different country and all the different, you know, cultures they're exposed to. I, I just think that's a, a pretty awesome thing if you can, number one, afford it. And if you have a kid that has the, the brains to be able to do it. Yeah. My wife went to Duquesne for very, very many years. And one of those semesters, she got to go to Rome for school. Okay. And so this was during her law school times. And being that it was a Catholic university right? Isn't yeah. that right? Um, one of the classes they could take was like canon law or something okay. like that. And it, she's not super religious. So I thought that was kind of <laughs> funny. And it also seems like all of them that went over there kind of just majored in drinking for a semester yeah. and hung out. Unfortunately, I think that's what those semester abroads yeah. end up turning into. Yeah. One more question for you. Shoot. If you were going to go back to school for something, what would it be? Like a master's, another BS, what kind of major, though? I, I, I think it would be this computer engineering thing. Oh, really? Yeah, because I, 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 I didn't realize that the hardware component of this was such a big deal. Like, And I and one of the things I mentioned uh, I have a note on is if I would have known about all of these different types of like things we've been doing podcasts on, yeah. I, pr- I probably would have gone for computer hardware, computer engineering to begin with yeah. and done that because – 
I'm a pretty tactile person. Like I love mm-hmm. tearing things apart. I love building things. And I think that the hardware engineering in particular, that's what they do. I mean, they're, they're literally like building systems and computers and, you know, all kind. It, I, I just love that part of it. So that's probably what I would do. I feel like because of us now, everyone else can't claim to have these regrets because we may, we've made it very clear to them the different options that are out there. Yeah. I mean, You're I don't welcome. I don't have any regrets, but no you regrets. Know. Yeah. But, yeah. Me neither. I, I really enjoy it. Yeah. Well, sometimes I enjoy what I do. And I enjoyed mechanical engineering, but yeah, I think it's fair. All right. Okay, before we move on, I think it's a great time to take a break for a word from our sponsor. Yeah, well, we don't have a sponsor this week. What? I know. I'm what pretty are the disappointed. chances of that happening? I am very disappointed. Maybe we'll get sponsors again someday. I'm assuming it's like Google, Microsoft, Apple, Dell. Next one will be, for <sighs> sure. Uh, but we do have a shout out. Nice. So this one is Jace B. I think that's how I would say it. Yeah, Jace. J A S E. Jace B. Yeah, I know a Jace. Oh, do you? I do. Oh, not I not this Jace, Jace, but you might know this one. This one's a junior in civil engineering from Kentucky. Oh, we just made fun of civils. Uh, oh, this is the best part. Sorry, Jace. Oddly enough, says I wholeheartedly agree with you. Your stance on civils. <laughs> <laughs> so he is a civil, and he knows he's the worst. That's great. How yeah, great is okay. that? Okay. Yeah. Would like an episode on useless things we learned in college which I think is oh an my, amazing episode we might, That idea. might have to be a multi like episode. Like by year almost. Yeah, yeah I mackerel. think that's great. We're going to definitely have to do that one. And then another one on sailboats, which I know nothing about. I think that would be good because our boy Jay... He is a we, sailing machine. We could we could get him to like give us some info about. I don't yeah. think he does like big big boat sailing. He does like kind of that middle sized boat sailing. He he could kind of be our resident expert. Yeah, that that would be nice. We could do that. Yeah, we could do that. So thanks for writing in. If any of you have great ideas like Jace does, why don't you email us at unprofessionalengineering at gmail.com. Make sure you subscribe, review, like, share. Don't forget you can always say to your smart device, your Alexa or your Google device, just say play unprofessional engineering and it'll always pick up the most recent uh, episode, which is pretty cool. That is really cool. It in is. Fact. I show off all the time. Like when people come over to the house, I'm like, Alexa, play unprofessional engineering. And Where's they're like, my what? Voice. They're like, Luke, you sound so good. What's that awful voice next to you? Yeah, that happens. I say it's a dying chicken. <laughs> it's a dying chicken. I've never heard that, but okay. All right, moving on. Fun moving fact. on. Fun fact for you, Luke. Shoot. The first computer engineering degree program in the United States was established in 1971 at Case Western Reserve in Cleveland. As of 2015, I guess this is a separate fun fact, right. there were 250 ABET accredited computer engineering programs in the U.S. That's pretty many to grow in the I last like, say. 50 years. Yeah. Um, I have a quick rundown of classes, and then I'm going to let you talk. How about that? That works. So classes you're going to take, all your normal calcs, like calc 1 through 97, differential equations, which was just the worst, your physics classes, your entry-level bio and chems, other electives like landscape architecture, which was one of my favorites. <laughs> it really was. Uh, a lot of electrical engineering's uh, electrical yeah, engineering classes. Electrical They're stuff. very closely related. I actually have a friend who went for computer engineering at Penn State, and then he went to, I think, Purdue for his master's in electrical engineering. And now he works at... CVS. <laughs> no. <laughs> he might. I mean, I don't, I don't think so. Who's... Okay. Who's the competitor for to Intel, the processors? A- AMD. AMD, yeah, okay. so he works for them. But so, you know, good job. Uh, lots of electrical classes like circuits, electronics, and other types of electives, computer-related courses like a lot of programming you're going to have to do, digital and computer systems, software engineering, computer architecture and design, so on. And you can also get a BSEE, so a, an electrical engineering bachelor's, with a computer option, which is where you take more electrical engineering courses and fewer computer courses, but you kind of have a focus in that area. So making sure you're an electrical could do all those jobs, but also you have that kind of, not a minor, but kind of like a focus in the computer area. Gotcha. Sounds good. All right. I'm done talking. Okay. So uh, I, I got a couple of things about what they do, like your day-to-day kind of things. And again, I focused on hardware engineering because mm-hmm. that was most interesting to me. So again, right off the top of my head, mm, a computer hardware engineer typically does the following. So they design uh, new computer hardware systems, creating schematics uh, for computer equipment. Uh, they test 
and build uh, computer hardware. Mm -hmm. uh, they analyze test results and they modify those designs. Uh, they might be updating existing uh, equipment or enhancing new equipment. Maybe there is some failures or maybe some warranty issues that are uh, cropping up that they need to address, uh, and they'll take over those. And they also, in some cases, they actually oversee the manufacturing process yeah. of uh, this equipment. And the reason why that's important is I never knew this until, I'm going to say, I don't know, maybe a few years ago, but like the chips themselves, like when you see those commercials where people are wearing like the hazmat suit and they're holding the chip like in a clean room, apparently like a processor is super, super sensitive to like dust and humidity. And like when they're actually making the processors, these things have to happen in like super clean environments. Uh, the other thing too, uh, when you think about like those warranty issues, the, the one story I tell is I had a Microsoft surface book. They'll never sponsor the show now. Uh, <laughs> and this thing, the screen started to well, swell. Okay. Finish the whole story though, yeah. but go ahead. It ended up being awesome. Mm -hmm. So the screen started to swell and whenever the screen popped off, the whole computer still worked, which was crazy, yeah, it was. but I could see the batteries look like pillows. And I mean, it was that way for a long it time. It was, it was. And, and, and then whenever I looked at what happens to those batteries, whenever they actually uh, rupture, it's like a volcano. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I got to put this thing in my shed at night so it doesn't burn down the house. And I'm just thinking about how many times I like stuck my face in there Ooh. looking at it like, oh, that's neat. So Microsoft did me good. Mm -hmm. I can't complain. So I went to a Microsoft store with the laptop and the guy was like, oh, yeah, we can't let you leave with that. He said, mm -hmm. did you back everything up? I said, yeah. And literally, they handed me a brand new Surface. Uh, haven't had any issue since. Uh, the thing's been running nice and cool. Uh, so I think it may have been maybe something with either the manufacturing process or maybe there was something from a software standpoint because software can yeah. control how the fans yeah. are working and operating. So uh, so those are the kind of things that they would fix, like that kind of problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a fun thing that I found, though, and I didn't find this with any of the other um, job-related things that we've researched, type yeah. of engineering, is very distinctive personalities. <laughs> and this one was well, really interesting. So it's interesting because engineers in general kind of have a stigma or a stereotype about we do. the type of person. We do. Pocket protectors, socially right. awkward, potentially. Right. But this is unique yeah, that they, they really one. called this out. So computer hardware engineers uh, tend to be investigative individuals, which means they are intellectual, introspective, and inquisitive. Hmm. They are curious, methodical, rational, analytical, and logical. Some are also realistic, meaning they're independent, stable, persistent, genuine, practical and thrifty i feel like you qualify luke well you did miss your calling i i do stable I, maybe not mm, persistent maybe not but yeah. practical thrifty inquisitive inquisitive logical, somewhat logical rational mm. i'm the most rational person i know <laughs> sorry um, that's interesting yeah, yeah. I, I thought that was pretty cool i wish um, we had a breakdown for all the other ones now yeah uh, my guess is like civils and electricals would be like you're the worst. I, how could it not That's be? All That's it the says. whole line. That's all it It's the says. whole wiki page. Yeah. Yeah. So a few things that I had on Shoot. hardware, they do, they make, like, they're just things that they would work on. Uh, microprocessors, memory chips, input devices, and that means, like, your keyboard even would be something that they'd work mm -hmm. on. Uh, mice, joysticks, gaming controllers, if you're, like, into the Xboxes and the PlayStation I, mm -hmm. maybe you would be working on things for that. Hard disks, uh, solid state drives, printers and monitors, and even networking components like modems and routers. So those are just some things that you might work on to give you an idea. Cool. I have a whole breakdown of software, like computer software engineering, if you'd like. I'd the things, love to hear that. The things they would work on in particular would be, and we mentioned this a bit b before, like operating systems, computer applications, like word processing, so Microsoft Office software things like that accounting data whatever networking and communication so like the internets they basically make right um, well them and al gore and al gore mostly it. yes he was yeah. very crucial in that very he was the sole founder and the only person responsible i think for it's it. at his house that's a fact it, it has to be where yeah. else could it be uh man man bear pig um instant <laughs> messaging and email 
So IM, I guess, is is instant messaging still a thing? I guess I, on phones. I feel like it's probably like, it, it's evolved into things like Slack. Yeah. Oh, uh, and that makes Zoom sense. And stuff like that. I and, guess and, since I use them for a different purpose now. Yeah. Like I guess I don't think of them as the same thing. Yeah. And then just other programming languages, editing, compiling, mm-hmm. debugging, things like that. And I that. think a lot of the things that the software side of computer engineering do, a lot of it is taking existing systems and connecting them together. So again, I mentioned my brother in law. Yeah. So money lot, bags we call them. Money bags. Uh, a lot of the guys that he works with, they're taking like systems at a bank or at a hospital and they need to connect like purchasing with you know another department and get information transferred back and forth and they're both completely independent systems Mm -hmm. but they have to talk so what these cats do is they develop the software custom software applications with you know c plus plus and python and all those different programming languages to get that stuff to transfer back and forth efficiently and effectively awesome All right, so before we move on, I have a little bit more to cover, but let's take a break for this week's Luke's Rant. I kind of gave my rant away uh, a little bit earlier, uh, but this is all about the service. This is really more of like an homage to what we do here at Unprofessional Engineering. I I like that. I I like the word homage. You've been really throwing out a few good ones. Do you have have a word a day calendar? No, I don't, Uh, but I should get one. And, And it really comes down to... I really wish I would have known about all these different engineering yeah. disciplines. Like, whenever I was getting into engineering, it was like, oh, you're either going to be a mechanical engineer, a civil engineer, or an electrical engineer. And, like, that was it. Those were the only things they ever talked about in school. It was the only things that, uh-huh. you know, the, the, the teachers and counselors recommended. And, and, I, and I get computers weren't, I mean, they were just on the rise, and these companies were getting big, like Dell and Apple and Microsoft. Um, so there probably wasn't a ton of availability for that, yeah. but I just so wish that I would have done something like computer hardware engineering uh, for my degree. Now, if I would have done that, I probably never would have met you, and we wouldn't have this amazing podcast. True. And have all this money True. and cars and houses and <laughs> many know, houses around islands. the world. You know, the I mean, you know, those. but uh, <laughs> but I really so so basically, this is kind of like a, a PSA. To all you young folks out there, don't just, like, take what your counselor says to you at school or, like, the first thing that you look at or even the first thing you're really interested in. Make sure you go out there and look at all the different things inside of different fields. A Mm -hmm. lot of times there's different subcategories uh, and specializations that in some cases, like this, computer engineering, I'm going to go over the pay here in a minute, they make a lot more money on average than most other engineers. Yeah. So just keep that in mind and make sure you look at all your options and listen to all of our previous podcasts and give them all five stars. There you go. I I think I'm going to take a moment to pat myself on the back now. Thank you, Luke. That was good. And you as well. Um, There you go. I I think we're doing a great service. We're probably up for an honorary doctorate here soon from someone, don't you think, for the great work we've done? I definitely think so. I think so, too. I will make everybody call me Dr. Luke, too. Oh, my goodness. Me, too. I mean, I'll be called Dr. Luke as well, which will make things confusing, (laughs) but I like it. Uh, All right. Moving on to how much they make. Yeah. So let's talk about the cheddar. So uh, this is back in 2018 was the most recent stats I could find. This was from uh, Bureau of Labor and Statistics. So this stuff has got to be relatively accurate. Uh, A computer hardware engineer has a median wage. This is median. This isn't like high, low average. So uh, and it's one hundred and fourteen thousand dollars and six hundred. So. That's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So how does this Mm -hmm. compare? So just a regular engineer, mechanical engineer, their median is 93 and a little bit of change. So they're making, what is that, 14 plus 7? I mean, they're making almost $20,000 more, $18,000 more than than their competitors as engineers. The other one, too, is just all other occupations. So the other one is... What do you mean all other so occupations? So like if you take every other occupation there is, um, you know... Oh, this is service, just like averaging all of them together. Every single one that there is. Oh. Uh, they make thirty eight grand. So like if you're like a hostess at a, at a restaurant or something gotcha. like that, uh, or like a you know garbage collector or like a tax a consultant or, or teacher. Gotcha. That 
average of all occupations is thirty eight thousand and some change. Is so it really, these guys make a lot of money. That's yeah. So like now let's break down. People. Like when you start to specialize. So let's say you decide you want to do research and development, which I do. Your no. median pay. Oh yeah, I do. This is the highest. Yeah, that's what I want to um, do. So you'd probably work for a company like uh, I don't know Dell or Apple or someplace that's making physical hardware with a big R and D department. You're gonna make over a hundred and twenty eight thousand dollars. Uh, peripherals, so these are the other th- things you mentioned. So keyboards, mice, you know, um, game controllers, that they sort do of thing. Well. They do uh, 126 and some change. Um, if you get into like the components, so semiconductors and electrical component manufacturers, so think of the things that go into computers, not the person designing the entire system. Those cats are going to make about $120,000. And then uh, the federal government, just as a general, if you're a hardware engineer, computer hardware engineer working for the federal government, you're going to make 113 and some change. And if you happen to do just related systems and design, you're going to make a measly $109,000 a year. I like that. I was like really impressed that you had all of that data. And then I looked down my page a little bit and, and I just the took exact a same screenshot data. of the same table. Yeah. I love that. No, that's really interesting though. The difference. It is. The federal government doing a pretty good job though. How about oh, that? They're doing an amazing job. So I had a little breakdown of if you were out of school, whatever, uh, in Pittsburgh, as well as San Francisco. So I'm going to give a quick one. Uh, just to give you an idea, zero to one years, so just out of school, you're looking at 67 k a year. So that's pretty good. This is in Pittsburgh. This is in Pittsburgh. That's not too shabby. One to three, 75, seven to nine, 84, 15 plus, 97 plus. So then looking at San Francisco, one year, you're looking at ni- like 100,000 right out of school, uh, up to almost like 140 on average later on. But I know I wanted to play a fun game with you where I guess – how much they make in each So don't state. look at my screen. I'm not going to. So, uh, it's this a great is, map, by this, the way. This is an awesome map. So check out uh, Bureau of Labor uh, and Statistics, uh, bls.gov. Tons of info Neat. out there. Make sure you do this before you go to school, kids. Also true. Um, so let's say you were in the San Francisco area, and what do you think the median wage is? So not One, average. 144. No, 119. Oh, Yikes. Let's say you were in... Oh, median. I yeah, guess that's median. lower yeah. years, median. too. Okay. Uh, guess what the median wage is in the Pittsburgh area? Median. 90? Uh, close. 100 and 150. Well, that seems uh, like a deal considering cost of living. So let's say you move down to uh, the Miami-Fort Lauderdale area. What do you think the pay is like going to be? the tip of Florida? The very end of Florida. End of Florida. Miami-ish? Ish. Don't Jeez. look. 110. Nope. 98. Oh, no. Ugh. Let's Miami. say you were Don't working in... Another reason not to live in Miami. Wichita, Kansas. Jeez, 80. Uh, pretty good. 85.8. There you go. That's not too shabby. Mm-hmm. And then we'll do one more. Let's pick Texas. That's one of my favorite joints. Let's say you were in uh, College Station, Texas. What's that near? Uh, it's right in the middle. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Dallas, maybe? How about 100. No, it's really low. It's actually only sixty-one grand a year median. Wow. Well, that doesn't seem right. So the thing that this you're going to notice on this map is the minute you get near like the high tech corridor over on the East Coast, DC, Virginia area, or you get over to San Francisco. Yeah. So wherever Austin is on that map, it's probably what like a hundred twenty, hundred thirty. Uh, let's see. Austin. Whoa. How did you know that? I, yeah. Holy I, I, well, I mean, you just the high tech. Austin. Team. Austin is a uh, one thirty three. There you go. That's pretty good. Okay. So I see Alaska has a little blip on there. What's that one? Uh. Uh, there's not enough data because there's only <laughs> 70 people there, so they can't pull an average. Moose aren't good at this. Yeah. Okay, that's really cool. That's Although an awesome if, oh, map. Here's another one. If you're in Honolulu, holy cow, you can make 96k a year living in Honolulu. Do you think you could live in Hawaii, or would you get rock fever? I feel like I, I, I feel like I, I bet I could. I think I could, but it's. it's uh, I couldn't. I couldn't imagine working with like what you're around to be so. Oh, that's a good. Point. Especially home office. Yeah, I could see that. Um, a few more things for you. A few you. more things. Who's gonna give you a job? Yeah. People I saw were like Google, Microsoft, Apple, Facebook, Amazon. Like those are the biggies, right? Those are and all. And then the you biggies. have like the government and other folks, and then like the other people like Intel and Nvidia, yeah. AMD. So all of those. Um, 
even like uh, Lenovo or Dell, those folks yep. also would be hiring. Mm-hmm. So you're going to be in some pretty nice companies yeah. if you get, the, the, get this. The best was Google, which kind of surprised me because I've heard, well, we've heard from a couple things. different Google folks that like the – the expectation there is is, is pretty challenging. Yeah, and the, Amazon the, the, as well. I've heard. Amazon, same thing. I think Apple would be kind of cool. Uh, mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. think Facebook might be interesting. Um, so how about uh, we talk about some well-known engineers and what they did? Yeah, yeah, let's hear it. And then if you have anything to wrap I'll us up after that. I'll have one more thing to wrap us up, but let's so, hear it. So uh, our Steve, friend of the show, our Steve, our friend. Our Steve. Uh, our friend claim him. of the show, Steve Wozniak, was a computer hardware engineer, or other, otherwise known as the Woz, co-founder of Apple back in the day. Got kicked out. I think he got hosed on some money there, I'm sure. Uh, the cat by the name of James Gosling. Fun fact, he's related to Ryan Gosling. No. Uh, he developed Java, and that's the update that you get every single day, and you don't know why. It just says you need a Java update, and then you don't know where to get it, and it takes you to some random, yeah. creepy-looking yeah. web page to get the latest Java uh, update. Uh, the next one is Bahrain Stroutstrup. Uh, I'm sure I nailed the pronunciation. Uh, His last name is S T R O U S T R U. Very famous. Oh, Uh, this. Oh, him. Yeah. This cat developed C plus plus. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty. And then finally, uh, Paul Buscemi. 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 Buscemi? (laughs) Not related to the Paul Buscemi actor slash New York City firefighter, Uh, but this guy created Gmail. Oh, that's pretty How big, awesome too. How awesome is that? Yeah, imagine if that was your baby. I actually signed up for Gmail so early that I actually got, like, my name. Oh, I, really? I didn't have to put, like, a 21 or a 76 at the end of it. You know how it gives you the recommendations when, like, what you want doesn't work? I got in there early enough where I could get my name. That's impressive. I think my Yahoo could have done that, but not. And definitely my Hotmail. Oh, Hotmail. Um, last thing. Shoot. So... How do you know what's right for you? Comp sci, computer engineering, electrical engineering. So here's what I heard from many sources. If you don't much care how computers work, then the computer science program is for you. Like you don't care the about the computer side of yes, things. Yes. The that's like if you don't care how they work, don't go computer engineering, go computer science. Also, if you're interested in the nature of programs and languages rather than writing the programs, that's computer science as well. Gotcha. If you're interested in hardware or the way the computers actually work or in building systems with computers in them, then computer engineering is the path for you to take. And if you're mostly interested in programming, the choice could depend on the types of programs that you're interested in because there's a lot of overlap. The decision between computer engineering and electrical engineering with a computer option that we talked about earlier really is just where you're more interested, the hardware or software side of things. Gotcha. So kind of weigh those if you've actually narrowed it down to being a comp sci or an EE or a comp eng and see where you're most interested you're probably going to be able to dabble in any of those yeah. areas, but that might help you pick your actual major. Sounds good. Yeah, it doesn't sound as good as mechanical engineering. I like to make less money, so. <laughs> all righty. Yeah, hopefully you all enjoyed this. If you found anything super useful, let us know. Or if you have any other episodes that you want us to cover, let us know. And if you want stickers, let us know at unprofessionalengineering at gmail.com. Until next time. See ya.